His name will forever be linked with the nation's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the former director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, has a new memoir. In the book, he discusses the COVID-19 response, his recent congressional testimony, and more on his journey getting into the medical field. Dr. John LaPook sat down with Dr. Fauci to discuss his new book. He joins us now with a preview. Dr. LaPook, good to see you as always. Thanks for having me, Larry. You've interviewed Dr. Fauci many times over the years. What's different about the piece that's running on Sunday morning this weekend? You know, we're used to seeing just a slice of Tony Fauci, especially during the pandemic, right? This is sort of the, the Tony Fauci you've never seen before. And it starts off in Brooklyn at the pharmacy where his, that his dad owned. Uh, you, you see the two of us, he's looking up on the second floor and he's thinking, boy, that's where my sister used to sleep. And, Boy, it sure looks a lot smaller now. He talks about his dad and, and what his dad taught him, what his mom taught him. And then we, we bring you forward. You know, he was, he was an advisor to seven presidents through all these different uh, infections and epidemics and pandemics. And up until the very, very present when we, we know what's been going on with, with COVID and all the controversy. Yeah, so what did Dr. Fauci say about the response to the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, um, I think what was so interesting and that a lot of people don't realize is that that vaccine that was developed so quickly, it was 11 months from when they got the sequence until they had the first vaccine you know, in the, and were able to be put into the arm of a volunteer. Uh, it was 11 months, that's a record. Uh, the reason why that was even able to happen is that back in 2000, he went to President Clinton and said, can we have a vaccine research center? And it was approved. And so it was one building where everybody who was working sort of separately came together. And that helped develop the technology that over the many decades, several decades, led to being able to make the messenger RNA uh, derived vaccine. And then you have to hand it to the Trump administration because they handed off the vaccine to the Trump administration and they were able to, through Operation Warp Speed, make hundreds of millions of doses widely available very quickly. So it was, it was a great example of the scientific community and the administration, the Trump administration at the time, working closely together. And of course, we know that after that, uh, you know, that that's kind of ran into a wall, that kind of collaboration. And there was a lot of sort of friction and mixed mis mixed messaging that went on. And I think that was one of the, the problems with uh, the response to the pandemic is just everybody, not everybody was rowing in the same direction. Yeah, yeah, we certainly experienced that. Dr. Fauci told you that his parents possessed a trait that helped him form his own approach to the world. What exactly was that? It was empathy. He said his dad, you know, he was a pharmacist who, who uh, gave people advice and of course medications, did, wasn't a very good businessman. He, very often people ended up not paying him, but uh, all he cared about was helping other people. And he, he instilled that into, into Tony as a, as a very young boy. And his mother, uh, there's a very poignant moment uh, in the book and that he told me where he came in, his mother was crying, he was a little boy. And he, why are you crying? She was reading about Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all the, uh, the hundreds of thousands of people who died. And you know, he said, what, at the time he was playing, you know, cops and robbers and bang, bang, you're dead. Uh, and, and she said, look, everybody, every human life is sacred and you, you have to tr try to be, be empathetic towards everybody. And he saw how upset she was and that, that made a big effect on him. And uh, I think he brought that forward throughout his career and as a one specific moment in 2014, uh, you know, during the Ebola uh, crisis, there was a, a nurse named Nina Pham who was infected and recovered but there was still stigma associated with even having been infected. People were afraid, I don't want to touch you because you know, maybe I'll get infected. And that was true in Africa, United States, around the world. And what he very consciously did with all the press around was give her a big hug. And then he brought her over to the White House where President Obama gave her a big hug. And that was a, a great example of his empathy and it helped you know, decrease the stigma, I'm sure, uh, uh, about people who had been infected uh, with, with Ebola. Um, it was kind of like the hugs seen around the world. <laughs> and certainly we could probably use a hug, all of us right now. Dr. John LaPook, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing That's your piece sure. this weekend. All right, take care.